You gonna you gonna talk now or are you gonna talk later? Hey, I can talk now. I just wanted to make sure that I got pu- properly pumped up from our intro music. You know, you I like didn't know if I was on the like screen or if it's just music. this nice banner. No, put am I on the uh, am I on the screen now or am I just? Uh... Well, no, we're gonna just stare at this banner. You see, like I a ton of banners got like tech and like jam jars in there. So yeah, it's very smart. You know, you've got like tech plus, you know, what's a what's like a trendy, I my camera trendy, on. a trendy form of like uh, how do we deliver uh, you know beverages to go. people. Here's my camera. Well, right, I got, look at this. I got like my my I got this hat given to me from oysters. Just need to grow your like beard a, out a few yeah. more inches there. Yeah. 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 It's it's called traveling a lot. That's what happens. Yeah. And I'm not in a jail cell, as some people may think I am. Oh, you're not even in the uh, the big office today. Where's no, the, I'm not in the studio. I'm actually going to Toronto in two days for the Restaurants Canada show. Cool, which cool. You'll be there. I think our, our there. guest is going to be there. Yeah, our super secret guest will be there. Super um, secret, super soft secret <laughs> guest. Yeah, we have to create the mystery, right? I think that drives mystery. Up, drive up the viewership. Um, but yeah, we do have actually a really cool show for you guys today. A very timely show for the the changing over the seasons. I mean, I want to say like the, the sun is shining, the birds are you know chirping and all that. But if you live in the Ottawa area or the Quebec area, you just uh, went through freezing rainstorm where we uh, got a Was nice that you? winter storm. Did you get storm. that? Did Lost get power. That yeah. Half the city is still out of power. I got I got lucky. I was the first one to lose. You like a backup generator. You do have a backup generator. You'd be one of those guys with that. Of course, I have a backup generator, Jay. I know you do. Generator, battery packs. I could run my whole house. Um, but yeah, so we uh, we actually do have a great guest coming in uh, from Open Table. Uh, you know, one of the I think everybody knows Open Table when it comes to uh, you know digital hosting and reservation services. So um, we actually have Vanessa Henderson uh, from their enterprise team joining us, and she's going to talk about you know some of the trends we can look forward to in this uh, upcoming season, as well as, you know, some of the great ways that open table can help restaurant tours um, succeed. And uh, yeah, so do you have anything else you want to throw in there, Jay? Are we ready to run the intro? No, I'm actually pretty excited about this. So, um, and you know what, Vanessa, I didn't say this, but we used open table yesterday at an event I was at in Calgary. So, ha. There you so, go. There you go, I'll Chris. I'm actually so using. We can, so we can bring her in. Do you want to bring her in now, or do you want to cut to a little clip of where we're going to be next week? Why don't we, uh, yeah, why don't we so cut we'll to that clip, and then, then we'll bring her in. Bring yeah. her in, then. <laughs> do you have the music left? Roll the clip. Okay. The Culinary Federation is so much more than a professional association. It's friendship, it's fun, and it's family. Come find where you fit in. Join the Culinary Federation family today. (laughs) Chris. Yeah, this is why we need to start laughing. No, well, first of all, well, first of all, not Restaurants Canada, and I did run the intro. Mm -hmm. Already bad and bad. Sorry. Good thing Vanessa's here to clean us up and you know save the show. <laughs> Man, we're already five, you know, five minutes in and falling apart here. Good thing we brought a professional today. <laughs> Welcome, Vanessa. Welcome to the show. Um, thank you so much for coming. And uh, maybe you could start by introducing yourself and, and what you do with Open Table. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and I, I'm glad uh, Jay's running the tech side of things. <laughs> 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 to the varied success. I don't know about that yet. Thanks for the plug on the diner side of Open Table. Love that. Love that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, traveling diners, I'm sure. So uh, my name is Vanessa Henderson, and I'm the Enterprise Restaurant Relations Manager for Canada. So I work with some of our um, large corporate uh, restaurant partners and hoping to um, help them maximize on their businesses. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's awesome. We're looking forward to it. And we uh, I know we've done lots of prep, so there's lots of great topics. We want to try to make sure that we can get through all of them um, with uh, with brevity and uh, effect. So let's uh, let's start with like, you know, when we're going into spring and summer. Like this is the time of year when everybody gets to, you know, make sure all their systems are working. They want to run all their updates. They want to make sure all the wires are connected and they haven't been chewed through in the winter. But another big thing is around, um, you know, bringing back new staff. So there's a big staff turnover that's just about to happen as exams end and people either return to their cities and get jobs or, um, you know, people come home from school and they won't, they're looking for jobs. So restaurateurs are going to be going through this, a big hiring process and a big lift. Um, 
So, and I, and I know that uh, one of the biggest problems that we're dealing with is around this like green staff, uh, green staff coming into restaurants and, you know, these diners having high expectations. But what have you seen, what have you seen with this trend and kind of what are the, you know, recommendations or tips you might give these restaurant tours going through this? Yeah, I think staffing is improving for some restaurants because we've got better staff retention in some cases and greater skill mastery once we've got staff in the restaurants, but still um, acquiring new staff is a challenge. So uh, I think there's also the inflation piece that plays a big factor here that could be affecting diner uh, and consumer habits. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, I think it's about hospitality being at the forefront of what restaurants want to deliver. And um, while they're digging into training, while they're trying to streamline their operations, they've got to be using tools that help them understand who their diners are, what they want, and really deliver on them. So uh, within the Open Table platform, we empower guests to let the restaurants know why they're coming. It's a birthday, it's an anniversary, uh, what their needs are, um, you know, special notes like I'm bringing a stroller with me or I'm vegan. Um, so keeping an eye on those notes adding to them within the restaurant environment, right? Adding visitor notes or additional tags really helps us to understand who those diners are, giving that more sort of tailored experience in house. Um, and then I think hospitality doesn't end when somebody leaves your restaurant. We have to think about really um, how, you know, what our guests are saying uh, in terms of reviews and um, using those verified reviews through the open table platform always helps and then um, leveraging some of our relationship management tools to keep them engaged and keep them coming back for more so this way hopefully it's going to help streamline operations and keep people hospitality focused um, while we get through those those crunchy months with new staff yeah yeah, that's that's great. Like, and I think you nailed a couple of key points there. Is a like hospitality predictability. Like, these are things that I mean, predictability and hospitality were two things that went out the window for a couple of years. Like, we had no, we didn't know like what was going on. It was just about how do we serve this safely and how do we keep the doors open. I do love that we are returning to that to that era of like a hey, hospitality first, and so we need to give people the ability to do that. And um, today that doesn't just happen from being the host that's worked there for 10 years that knows everybody you your diners are coming from everywhere uh, all different spaces and they have all different expectations um so i'm even touching on the food inflation piece or trying to keep costs down the best way to do that is to have predictable diners and predictable um you know flow whether that's making sure you have enough you know not too much food or make sure you have enough food for these parties that are coming in to the same to the same vein once diners are in the restaurant if you have those notes or you know your guests oh these are this is the birthday party maybe we can sell them the birthday the upgrade special or hey maybe they're going to want to have some irish coffees at the end of the meal uh, which can always be a great upselling something like that so you're going to be better um you know better armed to help these guests because i mean another thing maybe you can touch on too is around that you know people are dining out less uh less right now but because of this their expectations are very very high and, um, you know, when restaurants, if they're running at 100 percent, great. Uh, but if they are still dealing with staff or, or you know, food inflation costs and trying to you know, manage that, um, like what are some of the ways that you would recommend that they can they can tackle this using some of those digital tools that you're mentioning? Well, I think food inflation is real. We're seeing it all over the place for sure. And uh, in terms of managing costs, restaurateurs have the best lens on how to manage costs within their restaurants. Where we can help is driving revenue to their restaurants. Um, and when we do that, I mean, I think we can all agree that an empty seat is the greatest loss to a restaurant, right? So from a revenue perspective, uh, if we can make every, you know, the most dollars per minute per seat, those kinds of decisions are going to help keep the restaurant up and running regardless of what our cost of goods is after the fact. So using mm -hmm. online reservations to drive revenue to the restaurant means um, less time spent on phone, right? And, and you know, uh, less time worrying about who's answering the phone when there's no one there to do it. Uh, as you said, better inventory planning and waste control. If you know that there's a large party coming in on a Wednesday night, you can make sure to be ordering uh, properly for it. If it's a large party, let's say it's a large party of vegans who are coming in on Wednesday night, you can tailor, um, you know, your ordering to make sure that you have those items ready to go. Uh, hopefully, better inventory control in ordering means better waste control on the other end of that spectrum. Yeah. And then. Um, by that same token, it's all about managing the staff that you've got um, and the labor dollars that you're spending. So understanding that 
with more online reservations, you can plan ahead. You can take a look at what the schedule looks like um, for the week ahead and see that it matches up with the amount of diners that you're expecting. So maybe Thursdays are getting busier and busier. You can see those trend lines in your reporting with an open table and you can staff mm -hmm. accordingly. Maybe your lunch program on Monday has taken a huge hit because people aren't back in office, let's say. Maybe you want to attribute those uh, labor, you know, those those amazing staff and those labor dollars to nights where you're going to need it more. And maybe you're going to cut a lunch program here or there, um, depending on on those trends. So mm. really, it's about using uh, a great revenue generation tool and then using really great planning reporting tools to make better decisions about how to uh, manage your costs. Absolutely. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really, really, really strong points in there. And I think some of the messaging that like is happening in general is, I mean, you don't know how many people I talk to at App8 that just say the amount of time spent on the phone is amazing. And you don't have anybody that, unless you have a host, which still needs to serve people, it's hard to manage a phone line for takeout orders, for questions about reservations, for booking reservations. And I actually think restaurants, like I said, one, like Open Table can take a lot of that on. So your staff has more time to focus on hospitality. But I think uh, restaurants need to really look at all of the operations in their in their um, you know restaurant and see what are those manual things that we're doing offline that we could potentially either automate, use a digital tool because you know with staffing is still an issue and you want the staff to be able to spend as much time on the actual service and hospitality and less time on managing some things that you know people are on all these digital channels now they're finding restaurants this way. And if you have, you know, if, if most of those people are served by digital tools, then yeah, you get the odd person that wants to call in that wants that personal touch, you have the staff to manage that. And you can manage that kind of in person experience as well. Um, so it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's really, it's a time where people need to, to look at the restaurant, because I think you also mentioned around how hospitality could be one person and now it extends past these restaurants. And it's like, the, it's not uh, feasible for one person or one restaurant to kind of manage that just with, you know, the offline tools we have. Uh, we need to lean on digital and we need to lean on these automation tools to, uh, um, you know, get back to uh, the level of hospitality we had kind of pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, Jay, I think you got another great promo lined up that we can run here. And then I think we'll jump into, uh, you know, <laughs> we can jump in a little bit more to open table and, and what's made them uh, great for so many years. Awesome. Here we go. It's not about turning on the lights starting the grill and prepping the food you put on an apron flip the open sign and ready for the day regulars sit at the same spot and tell stories that bring smiles some days can be chaos challenging you persevere because you have an undaunted passion a calling to make people feel welcome and warm guests come and go some you may never see again the restaurant business is heaven and hell it's laughter and tears forever changing and extremely challenging when the day is done feeling exhausted yet somehow content you smile knowing tomorrow you get to do it all again and you wouldn't change a thing Another great promotion. Um, <laughs> so still, still wondering where there? the Restaurant Canada show is coming in. Um, yeah, yeah we'll, I'm sure we'll get we'll there. Get, we'll uh, get it in there. We'll get it in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So before we jump in, like I know Vanessa, you've given us kind of a general overview of what Open Table does, and we can touch on that a little bit more. But uh, maybe give us a little bit of your background. We'd love to ask the guests, like, what got you into food service? What got you into like this hospitality, even on on the digital side? Um, and kind of what made you. Like kind of why does why was it the path that path that you chose um you know in general how i got into hospitality well um i um ultimately i'm a people person and i like to to talk about restaurateurs sometimes as being hearts on legs and i think uh <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how i am too the connection around people and around a table is the best place for that to happen so i wanted to put myself squarely in that space where I was facilitating those magic moments around a table. So um, I started off in fine dining Italian at 18 and um, did both the independent restaurant side of things, uh, joined um, one of the, the greatest corporate restaurant chains in Canada and got tremendous training, really like academic training. I, was, I went to school for business at the same time. Um, but I really loved the corporate restaurant space because it allowed me to see 
every piece of a really well-oiled machine, how all the parts fit together. I was given tons of learning opportunities and where, you know, there were, there weren't programs I'm, where I was necessarily that um, taught hospitality in a more intellectual or academic way. I was given a lot of opportunity to do it on my own. And uh, and then I went out and, uh, and did more of that, studied wine, became a sommelier, um, got a degree, um, studied a lot of marketing and, uh, you know, got a degree in business, studying marketing and sociology. So really understanding how people think and what they do. And I think it's paid forward to a, a really cool career. I've, I've touched on wine sales. I've been on the recruitment side of the hospitality industry and um, joined Open Table really because it allowed me a place where all of those parts of, of my career up until that point congealed and made sense to to offer um, as a trusted consultant to the restaurants I work with today, just having that great understanding of the industry in all corners. That's amazing. Like, it seems like you you figured out very quickly, like what you loved and then found ways to continue to stay in that uh, stay in this space, but continue to evolve yourself, evolve your roles, evolve your level of like uh, involvement. And I know what you're talking about. I've seen you at trade shows. I, I, you don't, you don't give handshakes, you give hugs. Like I've seen your customers <laughs> like, Oh my God. Like I see, I've watched people notice you from like three booths down while someone's doing something really cool. And then like, oh, it's finesse and they run over and it's like, hello and everything is great. So it's like, you, you clearly found, you know, the right place. And, um, you know, it's very cool to see you. It's actually, it's very cool to see anybody being able to actually follow such a great path um, and kind of know what they want. So, I mean, Open Table is obviously very, very lucky to have someone like you, but uh, yeah, I know it goes both ways. Um, it goes both ways. I'm very yeah. lucky to have Open Table too. <laughs> well, <laughs> they've been, yeah. Really kind words. Oh, well, you know, dude. It came very easily. Um, and so, I mean, there's a great way to segue. So, I mean, Open Table has been a great name for so long. Like, I've known them for a very long time. They've done a lot of different things and innovate a lot of different ways. So, like, what are the, some of the things that, that you've noticed working for them that really helped set them apart after all this time? Oh, my gosh. That's a great question. I think uh, there are a few really important ways um, that were set apart. Uh, number one, we're so fortunate to have the trust of millions of diners who have an, you know, our app on their phone, who enjoy our desktop experience, and they rely on us to make dining decisions every single day. So um, I think our user experience is exceptional. We're always tailoring suggestions to diners to get um, the right restaurants in front of them at the right time. Um, and, you know, by consequence, that keeps our restaurant partners hopefully full and uh, uh, with, with great guests. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, our tech is really great. We have the best in class table management technology. Um, we really listen to and work closely with our restaurant partners and we want to solve for their challenges in service. We don't have time in service to have tools that, you know, don't work efficiently and, yeah. and intuitively, right? We talk about staffing challenges. We want you to be able to walk into your shift open up that iPad and, you know, kind of let the show run itself. And that's just sort of the, the anchor to a great shift. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a, a really important piece as well. And I think not only are we doing, you know, connecting the diners with the restaurants and managing what's happening within the restaurant, you know, um, with a tablet, but we're giving restaurants the tools to stay connected to their guests. We're, um, giving them you know, a really great review uh, management platform. We're allowing them uh, or empowering really reservations coming in through their social media channels, uh, through our meta integration. Um, and we integrate with email service providers so they can keep in contact with those guests and keep them, I always like to call it like the diner retention cycle. The guests mm -hmm. come in, they tell you who they are and what they want, you know about it, and then you can market to them in a way that makes sense for them to book directly with you next time around with really great email marketing. That's amazing. Yeah, you, you nailed a couple of great features, like a, a bunch of great features and things that you guys have done. But I mean, just the fact that like a tool like this can, like it does cost a good amount of time, you know, from, you know, it costs a good amount of money to run it and a good amount of time that you've been able to, you know, this is something that, as you said, like, um, no, I don't even know the official number, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of restaurants have used and continue to use because there's value and you're able to figure out what features are most important to the largest number of restaurant tours to keep them happy. Um, one of the things that I, I think uh, we talked about that I love is this idea that it's not even just like 
the restaurant's benefit, but even as a guest who uses Open Table, I think you mentioned around how digital hospitality travels with you. Uh, maybe you can touch on that and some of the, the cool ways that even you who works there benefit from this since you're you know traveling all over. Um, anyway, so maybe you can speak to the that side of it. Right. Well, there's nothing worse than being you know a restaurant lover and not knowing where to eat in a new city. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and the risk that you take, you know, just walking in somewhere. So what I love is that my app knows me. It knows my dining preferences. It's tracking where I eat at home. And when I travel, it's suggesting restaurants uh, that suit my needs. So mm -hmm. that, you know, really helps to take at least one of the risks out of um, out of dining in a new city, which I think is amazing. And from the restaurant perspective, it's inviting guests who may never have had exposure to them uh, into their restaurants. And that's a pretty special thing to have people from around the world. Um, we work with diners or, you know, din diners uh, on our network are from over a hundred different countries. And so imagine the idea of that sort of cross pollination effect. When those diners come in, they have a great restaurant experience in a town they don't know, they go home and that's what they're talking about with their friends, their circle of love and influence. You can't pay for that kind of testimonial marketing, so yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces, yeah. Well, and I think you touched on a piece as well that is so nice when you're traveling. And I mean, I, if you travel a lot for work, and people talk about, oh, you get to travel all these cities, it must be so much fun. Oh, you get to go there all the time, but it's like sometimes you know you're just this is you know you're tired, you're exhausted, it's your you know you're a long trip, but you can open up your app, you can find a restaurant, and not only will you find a restaurant that suits your taste. But the restaurant is already given information about you, so you can get that tailored experience that you would get at home while you're while you're abroad or or, or elsewhere. So it's very cool. And um, again, too, you touched on like uh, the idea of like that you're promoting restaurants to people. So I think um, you know a big topic around like third party third party um, say like delivery or ordering, or it's a great way to acquire customers, but it's a very expensive way to keep customers or keep guests. And but you guys actually do help with this as well. So you do drive diners to restaurants within your network. And if people are using, say, their own first party uh, ordering or they're just, you know, using their dining tools, then they can be more profitable than acquiring those guests from a third party platform. So maybe you can touch on the um, how you guys drive diners to establishments as well. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great point. And thanks for, for, for mentioning that. I think oftentimes we, um, you know, sort of get, get uh, put in the box of being a, a reservation platform. Um, and we're way much more than that. Yeah. So we're really offering diners inspiration uh, for all occasions, for every budget. As I said, we love to match up the right diner at the right time with the right restaurant. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how are we doing that? Well, we've got tons of diners who are engaged with us on our app and using our desktop experience already. So we have this great pool of people who are just ready to dine. Um, we work with hundreds of trusted partners across the internet and in cross-pollination marketing efforts. Um, not to mention we do our own email marketing campaigns that are tailored to diners' preferences. So, um, you know, I get emails all the time about the best brunch spots in Toronto, uh, knowing that that's part of, you know, my dining habits. Uh, we do a ton of social media marketing, and um, I don't know if anybody here uh, watching uh, was in Toronto uh, this past summer and fall, but we had a really big, biggest ever in Canada, I believe, um, out-of-home marketing campaign. We called it Dine On. It was a welcome back to restaurants, our sort of like celebration of coming back to restaurants. Um, so huge billboard campaign to try to attract um, new diners to our app and um and new restaurants to our platform as well so um gosh i could go on we do listicles we do all yeah. sorts of blog posts well, and all you know all the relevant stuff that's happening in the industry so we're all things point to driving diners to restaurants we really want to make that connection authentically and um and you know and listen on both sides to our, both diners and the restaurants for what they're looking for yeah, that's amazing. And I mean, the fact that you have so many services, I mean, I just thinking about this and then talking with you, I mean, I love, I, mean, I just talked about it. Hey, you want to transition people from third party to first party, but there's such a huge, that's such a, so easy to say, but there's such a huge gap between everything that goes into like the advertising, the promotions, the, the having the platform with like a third party to saying, I want to offer my own, say, first party ordering and expect to have all the same pieces. Well, 
Uh, that is a huge gap that you can, it's really hard for say small restaurants to do that because they might not have a marketing lead. They might not have the, they might not have the knowledge to run, you know, pay-per-click and ads and things like that. So, I mean, I've been looking for solutions to help people bridge that gap and clearly open table slots right in between those two to say that you're, you know, you're not going to be necessarily paying that, um, you know, that same fee for the third party, but they don't necessarily have to go out on their own and just say, okay, now it's all on you set up, you know, a, third, a first party ordering and good luck. They can use a service like open table to help bridge those gaps. And I'm sure they can ramp up and ramp down the amount of services they're using based on either their experience or the level of success that they're having. So it's very cool and super, super important for restaurateurs right now to find a way to bridge that gap. Yeah, absolutely. And to that point, you know, we're doing all of this marketing uh, on behalf of our restaurant partners, on behalf of, um, you know, looking for new diners to join our network as well, we're doing that anyway. And so we're, we're joining Open Table as a platform. Sometimes we, you know, we talk about sort of the diner acquisition fee, and it's really great that it's a pay on performance kind of thing. If you're open to our network, you're only paying for diners who are truly having sat and eaten in your restaurant in that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so it takes some of the, you know, some of those sort of variables um, out of the decision making around marketing because you're getting what you pay for in this case. Yeah. And it's easy to see that because you can give them statistics in marketing, but if they're not, you know, they didn't go to school for, for that or they haven't looked at it, then it's not always easy. So it's like there might be great data. And that's the other piece is that there's so much data out there right now. Uh, that people can collect this kind of data all over the place from several different, you know, tools in the restaurant, but data without context or data without an actual insight, like what you're saying, it's just noise. It's, it's, it's so hard. You get into this like paralysis through analysis as a restaurant owner sitting in their back office, trying to look at all the reports and saying like, cool, look at all this cool data. What is it telling me? And then you pretty much have to go Da Vinci code on it to figure out what's happening. Unless you have somebody like a platform like yours, um, that can actually help dissect these pieces. Because if they're spending all their time having to do all this research, well, they're probably not getting, you know, they could be spending that time elsewhere. All right. Right. Um, How much time do we have to be in the Yeah, back? I was going to ask, Jay, I don't know if I, I don't know if I dare ask if we have a, another commercial queued up. Surprisingly, uh, we do. Okay, oh, let's run that one more do. and then we'll, we'll wrap up and talk a little bit more about how people can engage. Now, be careful. Table. Be careful. This one just goes at the, at the end of it. Just cuts right off. It doesn't bleed out. Okay. Okay. You okay with that? You're so serious. Holding, holding on tight. He's so serious. Here you go. Well, I never even talk about a commercial so seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about it. It's a great event. Here you go. Been through a whole lot, but we overcome. Enemies in our face, but we ain't gonna run. Never drift off course, all we stay on mission. Won't slow us down, cause we way too driven. Yet we put in these 10,000 hours. You won't stop us, cause we got the power. Whole world is watching, and I hope they ready. From here on out, we a legendary. See how that just went. Well, <laughs> I'm stoked. I mean, you don't have to convince us to go because we're already going. We're going to be <laughs> at the RC show. And what's very cool about it is that, like, um, I mean, I've run into people that I hadn't met for years there that were there for all different reasons. And I mean, pretty much anybody that's either a fan of restaurants, fan of going out, curious about the technology, or if you're if you're in the on the business side, there's something there for everybody. Um, and and Chris. But wait, it's also more. that SVK is the proud media partner of the Restaurants Canada show this year. SVK so, is a proud media partner. You and will see our logo all over. I'm hoping. You guys all have a very cool setup. I mean, last year was also a lot of fun, um, you know, doing the live show all day. And I know you guys are going to be set it had up. nothing to do being beside the liquor entrance to the liquor side. It had nothing it could be two to do things. It could be two things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I still actually have stacks of those cups you gave me. My nephews <laughs> all love them. <laughs> Those cups got me a lot of trouble, but, um, and Vanessa, make sure you drop by our studio when we're there. Please do. I'd love that. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. We got, we got like, I think we got like people bring us food. Hint, hint. Uh, people always office. bring food. And it's amazing. Yeah, how much food that, how much food we were getting, Chris was crazy. It's amazing. Everybody wants you to try their stuff. And, and I mean, it's great yeah. and it's easy and it's easy to promote because there's so many great products. So someone brings you like, I remember eating like, oh, this is like oh, amazing cake. Mom, mom, mom. Oh, did you know it's gluten-free, <laughs> vegan-free, GMO from the table? I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. That's pretty cool. Do you have chocolate cake? <laughs> yeah. um, cool. So, I mean, there's obviously so many things that you guys can do for restaurants. And I know you have a, you know, a bunch of experts that can help people dissect this. But maybe you can kind of say, you know, 
um, help them out a little bit by saying, you know, what type of restaurants can really benefit from Open Tables help? And then maybe we'll talk about how they can actually engage with you. Yeah, sure thing. Well, um, really Open Tables for all restaurants. Um, if you if you're, you know, full service dining, Open Table is for you. We're advocates for the industry at large. We understand that no two restaurants are alike and uh, we have tools for everybody. So um, we really wanna help support restaurants based on their needs, whether it's a single location, multi-location, enterprise level. Um, we really believe that we have the best in class tools to help out. So uh, we're a destination for virtually every dining need as well. Uh, which is great. And we have a network already of 55,000 restaurants across 110 countries, constantly welcoming new restaurant groups. We've just welcomed uh, a couple of really exciting groups in Toronto and the Vancouver market. So stay tuned for those. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and it doesn't just start, you stop with, you know, coming onto the platform. I think it's really important to mention that we all know running restaurants is hard. Learning new technology can be confusing. Bringing on new staff means we have to train them again. So we offer 24 seven global support in many different languages. Uh, we have account managers, both phone based and uh, in uh, select local markets uh, that offer you know, really um, industry informed. We are restaurant people <laughs> within the company. Yeah. Uh, offering that sort of you know trusted consultative approach to really help get the most out of the tools uh that are sitting in front of our restaurant partners so uh, i really believe we are for all restaurants right and, and like as you described it you have tens of thousands of restaurants across all these countries that serve all these different types of you know different food verticals and you name it and while this might seem very big for somebody to jump into just if they don't know what they want well, your host, you know, your kind of digital hosting and, you know, guest experience portion kind of, I think, starts with that, like, first engagement where you don't actually need to know exactly what you need or exactly what you want, because frankly, if you did, you may not even be there. You may actually just need one of your experts to just start the process. So if uh, if somebody did want to engage, like, what's the best way for anybody, say, watching the show or, or who knows about you guys to, to kind of get started? Well, definitely in terms of... Um doing a little bit of research on OpenTable, I would suggest going to opentable.com or .ca um, and see the restaurants that are there, see uh, the way that we present them. I think it's really important to understand what uh, you're, you know, the club you're joining kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, and then from there, up in the top right corner is a for business button. Um, so you can click there, you can see the different um, platform, you know, uh, pieces that we offer and know that when you fill out a form to learn more, you're going to speak with a real person who wants to dig into exactly what your needs are and tailor a solution that is going to be best for you and your restaurant. Nice. And that, that, sound, that sounds easy enough. And if actually, if I could take one piece that you said and, and uh, go back to my web design uh, days where um, you can see what restaurants are there. But what I like to do is um, what I would recommend is you actually tell people to go look at the restaurants that are there and then go pick the three that you want to be like, like who is, what's your ideal goal? And it could be, it could, you know, you could pick the largest restaurant chain in the world and be like, that's my goal, or that's what I would like to emulate. And then that, what I found was like, I'd go ask somebody to find three websites they love. And then I already generally know what they're looking for. And I think if everybody does that, when they go to open table, then you're already starting a leg up to say, Hey, if I could be like more like this, what are they doing that I'm not doing right now? And uh, start from there. So. Right. And to that point, there's no um, difference in terms of the profile page. There's no difference between what's offered to our large enterprise level customers versus what's, you know, for the restaurant, you know, the neighborhood gem down the street. You have mm -hmm. uh, access to all of those tools. They're all customer facing. So you get to really manage how you're presenting your brand uh, on the network. Um, with the help, of course, of, of a trusted advisor within Open Table. Um, but yeah, I think that's really exciting to be able to say, well, these are the three restaurants that I love the most. And, and you do have the full control to manage exactly how you appear online. You can, um, you know, integrate with your social media networks on Facebook and uh, on Instagram. You can have a MailChimp or other, um, internet or sorry, uh, email service provider uh, account and help to sort of start to build your own marketing program from within, even at a smaller scale. That's amazing. 
Um, so it seems pretty like a very you know, easy choice for any restaurant that at least hasn't looked at Open Table yet or has not considered it. Uh, it's the best time you can go look at this right before everything just really picks up to see if there's any kind of you know tools or tricks that you can use or that you can throw into your bailiwick heading into this busy season. Uh, but I think uh, I think that's everything that we had for for you guys today. Just want to thank you again, Vanessa, for showing up. That was a fantastic talk. Very very insightful and uh, very excited to see what you guys are going to be you know announcing in a couple months there. Um, but uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you at the RC show. We look forward to seeing anybody that wants to show up at the RC show. You want to stop by the Cisco booth. There's going to be a live feed going on. And um, yeah, really excited to uh, to get out into the world and talk to people, see what's uh, been going on. So thank you again. And thank you everybody for, for joining us. Um, if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. Jay whoa, oh, whoa. I know. Finally, you did that. Hey, well done. Yeah. Yeah. Jay said he'd pay me every time I said every that. Every time so you say that. Go. One more piece of Cisco swag. Um, another another shirt. Yeah. So um, yeah, Jade. I don't know if you want to throw anything in there at the end. But uh, no, just thanks, Vanessa, for being on the show today, and appreciate everything you're doing. And Open Table has been around since what 1998. I saw. Is that right? A very uh, long time. Yeah. Chris was on. Chris was Chris was on the half pipes down in Ottawa downtown. Yeah, I know. Back in I those can't days. remember them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't put a half pipes anymore. So, awesome <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for social media too. We've got some great content yes. on our Instagram, uh, as Facebook. We actually have an Instagram for Open Table Canada as well as so a little bit more relevant to the localized the yeah. we're talking to today. So yeah, join us on socials for sure. Awesome. Cool. And everyone else that's going to watch the show, because we have most of our shows are watched on demand. So we're going to get everyone over there. Watch us on Spotify. If you want to watch us on Spotify, we're on Spotify. And you can watch it on Spotify, not just listen to it as a podcast, but watch it. Hey, YouTube, cool. Facebook, and every other channel. Just Google. Just Google SDK Podcast. It's that easy. So anyways, thanks for both of you for hosting the show, Chris and Vanessa. And we'll see you guys next week at the Restaurants Canada show. Thanks cool. so right. much for having me. Chris, I'm going to turn up the music, Chris, so you can turn down your volume there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as long as I don't have to talk through it. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys right. later. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye.